Island. Uh, I stepped off the boat and onto the pier, and there was a gathering vibe of community. First words I hear were, oh fuck, not more boat people. <laughs> it seems that they had been led to believe that I was an indigenous person, which clearly I'm not. Uh, but some bureaucrat in Canberra, well, he was safe in Canberra, had said, yeah, 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 she's indigenous, you know, and I've gone, uh, uh, oh, no. So anyway, I had to learn to do things their way. So, I was taken down to the beach, uh, given a really sharp spear, <coughs> and told, oh, today we're going to hunt stingrays. Now, not Steve Irwin's stingrays, little stingrays in knee deep water, so an elder took me into the knee deep water uh, with the sharp spear. He said, look, it's real easy. You just look at the stingray down the bottom, you know, and as he goes past, you just go, boom, and there he had it in like 30 seconds. One little stingray all ready for lunch, good eating, I'm told. And I've gone, sure, I can do this, no problem. So I've gone, boom, missed, boom, missed, missed again. And then I see this really slow stingray. And I think, aha. A stoner. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm waiting. And there you go. And fork. And for the first time that day, I'd speared something. With my right foot. Oh. <laughs> so I was taking the spear out, and there's blood everywhere. And the first thing I go, oh no, sharks. And the elder goes, no, no, no need to worry about sharks. The water's too shallow. They don't come in here. They Sharks? No, not a problem. Now, crocodiles? Absolutely. So, give them a little yelp. So here I am, trying to get out of the water, stop the bleeding on my foot while looking at the crocodile. And I was not good. So one day, I get this call in my office saying, hey, come down to the pier. So I go down to the pier, and I see this enormous crocodile on the pier. Fortunately dead. And uh, the, the elder comes up to me, you know, all the community uh, surrounded uh, around this crocodile looking at it. And he said, look, Jude, here's the thing. This is a sacred totem animal to us. We can eat it, but we can't butcher it. You are the only European on the island. Do you think it, you could, perhaps, butcher it for us? And I've gone... Oh, but I really wanted to be liked. So I said, yeah, okay, yeah, I can do this. Oh, but I've got to let uh, Wildlife Services know. So I go back to the office, I ring Gavin at Wildlife Services. Now Gavin is a local Indigenous fellow, and he goes, yeah, yeah, understand the situation. Just, uh, you know, before you uh, butcher it, just get the length, the width, oh, and determine the gender. And I've gone, well, funnily enough, Gavin, I don't have a lot of experience in determining the gender of crocodiles. And he said, no, it's okay, Jude, not a problem. You just stick your hand up its bum, have a feel around. If you feel something that's sort of like a cricket bat, or more like a cricket bat handle, then, yeah, it's a boy. Otherwise, it's a girl. And I've gone... Okay, no problem. <laughs> so anyway, that's cool. I go back to the pier. The entire community is ranged around this dead crocodile. They have laid out for me every cutting implement you could ever imagine. Everything from a Swiss Army knife to a machete. <laughs> and I've gone, okay, here we go. So I begin to, oh, hang on, no, I've got to get Gavin's measurements. So length, width. Moment of truth, the gender. So, and I have a feel around, and I go, oh, yeah, it does feel like the handle of a cricket bat. Yeah, okay. It's a boy. Okay, now I can get down to butchering. So I'm cutting and slicing and dicing, and I look up, and people are sort of laughing at me, and I'm thinking, oh, that's a bit harsh. Thought I was doing a good job here. So, I'm cutting away, cutting away, and I hit something really hard. Oh, what the fuck is that? Jesus Christ. So I start to cut around it. What is it? Oh. So you know a few minutes ago, I thought I felt this thing that sort of felt like a cricket bat handle? Turns out it was a cricket bat handle <laughs> attached to a cricket bat. Somebody had inserted a cricket bat into this once fearsome, but now dead, crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I've gone, oh, very funny. And then, of course, everybody's standing around. They're just pissing themselves laughing by this time. You know, oh, oh, she's an idiot. <laughs> but hey, dinner was great. And uh, I got to compliment it on my culinary skills. Uh, that, you know, they said, oh, really good job, Jude, you know. And, and I, I don't like to brag. But if MasterChef was related to crocodiles and sporting equipment, I would be the George Collin Barris of the Torres Strait. <laughs> so, you know, I'm halfway through my crocodile state and I realised, oh, I haven't told Gavin. So I run back to the office and I pick up the phone, I dial Gavin. As soon as he hears my voice, he starts laughing. I'm going, Jesus, news travels fast. Look, I know I'm a bit of a joke, but I'm just giving you guys, no, no, it's okay, Jude. I, I was in on the, the thing from the start, so don't worry about it. I'm just, you know, I've got, oh, all right. I'm feeling like a bit of an idiot now. So I go back to the dinner. They're still feasting on this crocodile. Well, they didn't, I can tell you. <coughs> and one of the elders comes up to me, you know, he puts his arm around my shoulder and said, Jude, you know, that crocodile, it's not really a sacred animal. We could have butchered ourselves, but we were bored. And we wanted to see if you'd be stupid enough or brave enough to do it. Game, set, and match, Torres Strait Islanders. Don't forget to come see the test show, 2nd of February. Check my website.